Hi everyone who has joined so far. Um, my name is Gemma Lloyd and I'll be hosting today's webinar. We're just going to give it another two minutes just to wait for a few more attendees to join. In two minutes we'll then start the webinar. Hi everyone, my name is Gemma Lloyd and I'm going to be hosting the webinar today. So just so everyone is aware, this will be recorded and we'll be able to distribute the webinar uh, after this session. In addition to that, on the right hand side, you will see a chat box. So if throughout the webinar you have any questions, please feel free to post those questions into the chat. Following the, once the webinar is complete, I will then revert to the chat box and have a look through those questions and answer any that we haven't covered during the session. So background on me, my name is Gemma Lloyd and I'm the CEO of Work 180. We're a global platform across the UK and Australia, so that accent that you're hearing is an Aussie accent. Um, <laughs> So hopefully um, everything should be should be nice and clear and I can assure you we won't be using any Aussie slang today. Um, I'm going to now kick off. So here's the agenda. I'll tell you a little bit about Work 180 for some context. We're then going to discuss how to use gender neutral language in job advertisements and some of the tools that can be used when writing a job advertisement to ensure you have gender neutral language. We're then going to go through the structure and some new terms that you can use during uh, when constructing a job ad. We'll be going through some examples from employers. So um, I love drawing on real things that other companies are doing to, to use gender neutral language or attract a more gender balanced workforce. We'll then go through setting expectations with candidates, a few extra tips, and then we'll get onto the question and answer session at the end. So first of all, here's a little bit about us. So Work180 provides job applicants with a transparent directory of employers committed to equality. So essentially women utilize us as a directory where they can search employers and what those employers have to offer, along with their available job opportunities. On the flip side of what we do for job applicants, we work very closely with employers to make sure that they're attracting high quality and quantity of women and particularly when we look at niche roles, um, such as perhaps technology, construction, or even leadership positions. So we're very different to other sort of job platforms out there. The first thing that we do is we provide companies with an endorsement. So employees that work with us have all been screened on their policies. If they meet a minimum benchmark, they get the Work 180 accreditation. We're very focused on, on employer branding, so getting companies' message out there to market. We go to market in a very niche way, so you will never find a Work 180 job 
on an aggregator or anything like that. For example, how we go to market, there's a, a fantastic group in the UK called Women in Transport. And Women in Transport have um, our job stream to their page. Um, so it's directly reaching a niche audience of women. And we also help retain talent by educating employers on best practices, particularly around HR policy. These are just some of the companies that we work with. So you can see everything from engineering to finance uh, to technology. And no matter what industry your organisation is in, these job ad writing techniques and the gender neutral language certainly applies to all of those. Okay, so globally, LinkedIn did a big, a big study and hiring for diversity was the number one global recruitment trend. So close to 80% of talent acquisition professionals were focused on diversity hiring. Why is this number important? It's important because what it says or what it recognises is that we're operating in a highly competitive market. So really, if we're going out there to attract more women or more diverse applicants, we have to really make sure we're putting our best foot forward. This is a very oversimplified roadmap to success around attracting a more gender balanced workforce. So there's really three key components. You've got to reach the right audience or get it in front of the right people. You've got to have a strong employer brand and you've got to have good job ads. If any one of those three things is missing, it's just simply not going to work. So if you're reaching the right audience and you've got a great employer brand, but your job ads are terrible, no one's going to apply. Likewise, if you've got a good brand and great job ads, but it's not in front of the right people, again, no one's going to apply. And, vice versa, and it all goes for reaching the right audience, but great job ads, but your brand's not very strong out there in the market, well, no one's even going to click through to read your job ads in the first place. So like I said, oversimplified roadmap for success. And what we're going to touch on today is the third point around how to write a really great job ad. PwC did a study in 2018 and the study was around what women want in a work context. And uh, these were the top three things that came out. So we've got career growth, competitive wages and benefits, and flexibility. I think it's probably fair to say that it's not just what women want, it's probably what most people want out of a workplace. But the reason why this is important is because these are areas that we really want to focus on, particularly with job ads or employer branding when we're going out to market. So let's get into it. Let's talk about job advertisements. So first of all, how to encourage women to apply. These are some higher level tips we have here. The first one is don't require every skill under the sun. You know, it's, a, it's amazing how many job ads we still see with 10, 15 dot points of required skills. And there has been research conducted that women will apply for a job if they think they meet 100%, whereas men are more likely to apply even if they meet, say, 60%. So just put a limited number of what do you absolutely need for the role? And that can be your required skills. The rest could be nice to haves. The second ones, or second, third, and fourth, are really about what I mentioned before that women are looking for. So talk about career growth and mentorship. Talk about how your flexible working policy works, if you have one. Share parental leave policies. I've got some really good examples coming up later from what other companies do to express these things in a job ad. And finally, is writing gender neutral job, ad, job ads. So McKinsey and Company in 2018, they did a big study of all the job advertisements in the UK. And 60% of those job advertisements were more biased towards men. So more biased towards attracting male candidates. That's a huge number. And, and the other thing actually to note about this statistic as well is the job ads 
unsurprisingly, I guess, that were noted to be more uh, biased towards male were the ones in industries such as technology, construction, consulting, finance. Now, those are the industries that really, really struggle to attract women because the, the talent pool to begin with is smaller. So they're the ones that even need to be more gender neutral. So there are masculine words and there are feminine words. This is just a list of some of the masculine words here that we see used in job ads. So words like independent, led or lead, competitive, assertive, determined, and analytical. And this study has been done by um, lots and lots of research. And some of the feminine words here, responsible, connect, dedicated, support, sociable, collaborative. This is just a set. And the idea is it's not to skew the job ad one way or the other, it's really to get that balance. These are some of the tools that you can use. Um, so the first one here on the on the top top left is a tool called Textio. Textio is a fantastic cool tool. You copy and paste your job ad into it. It will highlight masculine words, feminine words. If you've got too many dot points, not enough. If you're using corporate cliches, essentially it will give you a score, um, a score out of 100, and tell you where your job ad ranks, as well as an indicator to say it's more feminine or it's more masculine. And the really interesting part is Texio has done a lot of research, millions and millions of job ad analysis and gender neutral language fills jobs 14 days faster than posts with a masculine or feminine bias. So whether, even whether your objective is to attract a more gender balanced workforce or not, I'm sure we all wanna fill our roles faster and there's one really strong reason to do it. Um, the other two examples here, so the next one we've got Be Applied. Again, a fantastic tool. It will tell you your inclusion score, whether it's more feminine, masculine, and gender decoder. Now, gender decoder is probably the most simplest tool out of, out of the three. Um, if I were to choose, I would choose the Applied tool. And um, the reason why is because the Applied tool it's comprehensive, but not only is it comprehensive, but it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> so <laughs> the Textio tool does charge quite a bit and um, it is a very, very good, but it just depends on, on what you're willing to, if you do have budget. But um, look, the apply tool is fantastic. So certainly I would be going down that route. So let's deconstruct a job ad. Typically, this is a job ad structure. So we've got the job title, we've got who we are, the role, required skills, culture or benefits, and apply now. And that is typically the language that is used when breaking down each section of a job advertisement. Now, what I'm gonna show you is some ways that you can really enhance what the titles are on the left-hand side. So yes, we're talking about um, hiring for gender balance, but really, a lot of this is how to make your job ad stand out across all the other job ads, um, as well as using gender neutral language. Um, a job ad is exactly what it says it is. It's an advertisement. So we need to make sure we're advertising and really selling ourselves as a company to work for. So um, job title, salary is a big one, but I know it's um, not one that employers like to put on there. But who are we? So I've got some really good examples coming up where companies talk about who they are, but not in that particular way, it, not in that dry way. It's actually more about the impact that the company makes, which is, which is brilliant. The role. So instead of saying the role or your responsibilities, try something what you'll contribute to or how you're going to make an impact. So make people feel like when they join your company, they're really gonna make a difference. That's particularly what women are looking for as well. We, um, we talk to lots of women all the time, particularly in senior positions. And it's so much less around what the brand name of the company is. You know, they've been there, they've done it, they've got the big brands worked up through all their career. And what they care about now is, am I going to go to a company where I can really make an impact? 
um, am I, and am I going to be given an equal opportunity? Re required skills, again, very dry. So it's about you making it more personal, personable, what we offer you. And finally, the one that I really like is instead of saying apply now, which is very, very one way, continue the conversation. Continuing the conversation, it suggests this is, a, this is two ways and we're adults and we're going to see if this is a really good fit. Like I said, apply now is just, it's very dry, just you give me your CV. So a conversation is much more human. So I'm going to go into some examples now of what other companies do. So Atlassian, I absolutely love this example where Atlassian share what they what they do as a company. So for those of you that don't know, very, very simplified version of what Atlassian does. They create software that helps other software engineers, essentially. So IT people use the Atlassian software to manage product uh, projects or uh, software development um, engagements. Now, they don't say that when in this description. What they say is that our products are revolutionising the software industry and helping teams collaborate and craft the magic that delivers the best work. Think NASA launching the rover on Mars or Cochlear gifting those born deaf with the ability to hear. Your work directly impacts the products they use to advance humanity. It's amazing. Who doesn't want to be part of that mission? So when you're crafting your job ad, it's a big part of it is how are you describing your organisation? How are you describing the impact that your organisation may make? Another great example is by Zero. So Zero, they build software for accountants. <laughs> um, so you've got IT and you've got finance there, but the way that Zero talks about their company is amazing. They talk about how their software impacts individual business owners' lives. So it's really that end state and again, focusing on the impact. What we'll do though is um, with the examples um, that I'm providing is I'll make sure that we actually send this PowerPoint out after this session. So you've all got copies of, um, of these things that I'm going through. Now, um, the next example that I have, so going back to earlier on in the webinar, I mentioned there was three key things that women were looking for. And one of those three things was flexible working. Now, um, with flexible working, a lot of organisations have a policy and uh, a flex work policy, but it's not necessarily enforced. So what Lendlease uh, do is they go above and beyond um, in how they actually describe their policy. This is Lendlease Australia. And they get very specific. And what being specific does is it builds trust and it shows you know, this is a genuinely flexible role here. So when we look at this Lendlease uh, description, so they say this is a part, this can be done on a part time basis, working 22 and a half hours a week with the flexibility of executing the role across three, four or five days, depending on your preference. So that to me just speaks volumes, you know, so when you're doing your job ads, if you're a flexible workforce or particular role that you're advertising for is flexible, say what that actually means. If it's part time, if it's job share, if you allow work from home. Right, so I mentioned earlier about women not applying to jobs unless they think they've got 100% of the skill sets. Now, I absolutely love this example from Art Group. Art Group are an IT company. And so what they've done is they've got the what you'll bring piece. So they've got six dot points, no more on the required skills. But then it goes, not a perfect skills match. Tell us what you're interested in you might have a skill we didn't realise we needed. So as long as you're keeping up to date with the latest tech, we're interested. 
particularly for those companies that are talent pooling candidates, that's a fantastic paragraph to have in there. And you're really going to encourage more people to apply for roles, particularly in those niche, niche areas where you really struggle to attract more of a gender balance with your job ads. Um, again, this is a brilliant example by Lang O'Rourke. So Lang O'Rourke is a construction company and they haven't just said we have a parental leave policy, they've been specific about what that is. So they've actually said the primary carer is entitled to 26 weeks of paid leave, 18 of which are full pay and eight weeks at half pay. Now, on the Work 180 site, every employer has a table and it will say how many weeks paid parental leave they have whether they support flexible working but most organizations don't have that information readily available for candidates so if you have an outstanding policy put it in your job ad and obviously with this training i'm going through the best examples that employers have with different job ads but really it's up to you to sort of pick and choose which of these examples fits well with your organization and the outcomes that you're trying to achieve Um, at PwC, this is a fantastic job ad because um, it really says to me that you can come to work and you can be yourself. So, you know, the second paragraph is all around diversity, but being more specific about it, talking about employee led diversity networks such as disability, LGBTI or gender equality. They also go into the detail around how many weeks maternity, paternity leave that they have. But one thing I particularly like about this job ad, and it's also very, very effective, is that um, each person is the top paragraph and each person has access to flexible work. And then it says, our dress policy is flexible too. You choose what you wear based on the kind of work you do with your team and clients. So that really speaks volumes about shattering any preconceived idea that somebody might be going into uh, quite a stiff sort of workforce, they're talking about you wear what, what you think is appropriate. So the next example that I'm going to share with you is a work on 80 original. <laughs> And um, this has been very effective. We've actually, when we started using this in our job ads, it's, it's probably, if you could choose anything out of everything I've gone through today, this would be the number one thing to do. And um, it's a employee testimonial. And we insert these into all of our job ads. So say for instance, we're hiring for more community engagement managers or people in the marketing team we will include somebody's quote from the marketing team if we're hiring in our tech team it will be a software engineer's quote and we've actually seen up to 10 times the number of applications since putting in the testimonial and it makes sense um, job seekers trust the voice of the employee three times more than the corporate brand so the more that you can humanize and get testimonials into your job ads or get examples from real people um, into your employer branding, the more that's going to resonate with the audience. Um, so yeah, like I said, one if you could take away one thing, the testimonial would be it. Now, the next one is around getting applications in faster and also setting expectations. So on the second paragraph here, well, first of all, they've set expectations on the, on the, on the top one. They said, we don't require a cover letter, for example. So that's really important. But the point that I really wanted to highlight with this particular slide or example is the second paragraph. 
So it says NBN is a fast moving organization with lots to deliver. So we may not always wait until the job ad expires before reviewing applications. As a result, you should submit your application as soon as possible. So what that's done is two things. You've set expectations that, hey, if you don't get it in now, um, the, the application may close and we, so you may miss out on your opportunity. But what the result of that is, is that you're gonna get applications in faster. There's not gonna be the procrastination of, oh, I'll, I'll wait until Friday to do my job ad. People are gonna go, oh, I really like the look of this job. I better get it in now. So I love that paragraph. So I'm um, setting expectations where you can, and it may not necessarily be on a job advertisement. It may be on your careers page, and I've seen a couple of companies do this really well. Um, it may be on your careers page or, you know, if you have pages on other websites, but um, steps in the application process, and also if you can on your job ads timelines of when the application close. If not, um, if you don't have closed dates on applications, certainly you should be putting what NBN put in their, their example beforehand. Um, any of the things that you can do to make a better candidate experience um, and set those expectations, the, the better it's going to be for that per, for the per, people going through. Um, even if you make it very clear that, you know, there are still to this day lots of organisations that don't get back to candidates when they apply which is a really poor candidate experience. However, if you're not equipped with the right systems and processes to be able to get back to candidates, if you can actually set expectations and put that into the job ad or on your careers page, at least people then know. Um, with all of the research that we've done with job seekers, the number one bugbear, for lack of a better term, that they have is not getting feedback or not knowing if their application has even been reviewed or not, um, or yeah, so um, expectation setting is very important. Okay, so a couple of tips. So sign up for job alerts on our year competition. You might get a bit flooded with uh, with job ads on this one. So that depending on your industry and the, your competition size. You may or may not want to do that, but I think the point here is have a look at your competition's job ads. What are they highlighting really well? Uh, and, and what are things that they have in there that you know you do better? What can you highlight over and above what your competition does to make yourself really stand out? And the second tip here is sharing and engaging with your employer brand. So if we, when we're, we're talking about hiring for gender balance, and I'm just going to talk about, say, software engineers for a second. If you are a software engineer, you're getting contacted maybe at least 10 times a week from internal uh, uh, recruiters, talent acquisition and uh, recruitment agencies. And if you're a woman um, who's a software engineer, because a lot of co companies are really focused on diversity and and want more of a diverse workforce, you're probably getting contacted around 20 times a week. Now, what it comes down to is when, if you're a person who is proactive sourcing, what is gonna make that person really turn around and go, oh yes, you're the person I'm going to engage with that just reached out to me. It's whether you've been, whether you've got a strong employer brand. So what it comes down to is what, What's the external perception of your organisation? Are you putting content out there which um, which, jo which job seekers look at and think, wow, that's, that's a place that really cares about its uh, employees and is really driving change, for example. And are you sharing that on platforms where your network is? Are you sharing it on LinkedIn? And also, is your are your employees as well uh, engaging with the employer brand? And are they sharing content about your organisation on their channels? So that piece is really about activating your own networks.
salary negotiation and anchoring bias. I'll just touch on this really quickly. But we all know about the pay gap and um, look, it's about don't ask what somebody's on. Um, ask them what the candidate is looking for. And the reason why is if they were getting underpaid in their last role, uh, that's where the expectation may be set on salary. So a much better way to frame the question is what are the salary expectations rather than what were they on before. And finally, another top tip. So if I could give you two main takeaways. So the first one was the testimonial. The second one would be when you've written the job ad, ask the women in your company what they think of the job ad. Would that be something they would actually apply to? Um, because at the end of the day, that's what where you're going to get your best reference point. Are you writing in a way which resonates with the female engineers at your company? for example. And if you do all of those things uh, with job ads, plus the employer branding and reaching the right audience, you can have really amazing results. So we've been working with BHP for 18 months. And in that time, they actually increased the number of applications from women from 10% to 50%, which is absolutely huge. So now we're going to move on to um, questions. Um, I'll also have a look. There were some questions uh, sent through prior. So I'm just going to have a quick flick through those in case I forgot any. But if you do have questions, please put them uh, into the chat box. Okay, so somebody has asked um, if it's better in job advertisements to be uh, vague with what the role is or more detailed. Um, it's a really good question. And really what it comes down to is what role that you're recruiting for. Um, if you are recruiting for an engineer, for instance, I would err on the side of being slightly more detailed um, in saying that always, like I said before, write the job ad and take it back to people within your organisation who are in those job roles and say, does this appeal to you? What would you change about it? Um, and in terms of detail as well, certainly keeping six dot points or less. Um, Someone has also asked about how to attract passive candidates. What that comes down to, uh, it's a really good question actually because the research shows that job seekers will start assessing their next opportunity six months prior to actually applying for the job ad. So what employers need to be doing is making sure well in advance that they've got really strong branding. There's a couple of ways that you can make sure that you have really strong branding and uh, it can, we've actually got um, a free checklist. If you're interested in the employer brand checklist, my details are there, please just flick me an email and I'm happy to send it out to you. But the um, what the checklist entails is things like, um, does your, do the people in your influences in your organisation go out to networking events? Do they speak at panels? What content is being shared online? Are you writing staff profiles, for example? Um, have you won any awards? Do you have any endorsements? All of those things contribute to a strong employer brand. And it's really about being authentic. Um, if you have a look at the pages, the employer pages on the Work 180 site, those companies all have their policies there. They have examples of um, real employees and the testimonials and such. And what you'll see is that nobody is perfect. It's not about being perfect, it's about being honest and it's about being authentic and saying this is this is who we are and this is what we have to offer and this is the commitment that we have to for these areas of improvement. Those are the things that women really resonate with. Um, we see in the media every day, you know, gender equality is getting, getting um, called out um, and lack of gender equality is getting called out. 
So it, there's no point in trying to pull wool over over people's eyes and nor do you want to be that type of um, organisation. It's about what positive steps that you're making. Um, so with passive candidates, have a really strong employer brand. And then when you do go out to a uh, proactive source, they're more likely to engage with you. Um, someone has also asked how you can aim for gender balance when there's a shortage in the industry. And again, it's a great question. You may never be able to achieve 50-50. Um, certainly that's the ideal goal. I also like 40-40 um, with a 20% swing either way. Um, but what you can do is, yes, the, the, the candidate pool may be smaller within your industry, but if you are a great employer and you make yourself stand out against other employers, then those women <laughs> hopefully will come and work for you. And then your organisation who treats people properly will have the gender balance. And then as an, as an industry, you know, whether you're in engineering or construction or tech, you know, you can do things to help build out the pipeline in the long run. Um, one of the things that Work 180 does is we have a Super Daughter Day. So primary school age girls, um, they, they learn how to code and, and play with robots. So it's really about breaking gender stereotypes down from a very young age of five years old. And that's um, been in Australia for three or four years and will be in the UK um, in October. Uh, for the first time in London. So that's really exciting. Okay, fantastic. I think most of these other questions um, Oh, so somebody has asked for the link for applied. Um, I will make sure that that's sent out in the follow up email. Um, there's also a question around the 60% male bias in job ads. Do you have an analysis of the remaining 40% gender neutral versus feminine? It's, it's a McKinsey report. So let me, I should be able to, well, I will be able to get that for you and I will link to it in the follow up email as well. Um, can you send these slides? My hand hurts from too many notes. That's a that's that's a good compliment. Sure, I can I can certainly do that. Um, yes, you can. Someone's asked about um, uh, embedding employee testimonials in a video in the ad itself. I think that's a great a great idea. So if you don't have a if you have videos instead of a, a sentence, that's certainly that's certainly fine. Um, Okay, so if you want to, there's another question around short and snappy LinkedIn posts to get people to click on the job ads. Um, now, what I would do is probably put in a, an employee testimonial um, or think of the things that you think are most catchy from that particular job ad or role and put that in. I actually, um, the other thing that works really well is authenticity and using real examples, which does fall into the testimonials. I did a post on LinkedIn yesterday, or sorry, the day before it's already had over 600,000 views on it. And um, I had to turn my notifications off because it was driving me a bit crazy. But the reason why is because it came from a really authentic place and said, um, you can't see me at the moment, but I'm actually nine months pregnant. <laughs> and, um, and it said on it, I'm nine months pregnant, but you know, our, our company supports flexible working. So it has meant um, I haven't had to commute into an office, um, see what other companies support flexible working here or see what Work 180 has to offer here. So it was really raw. And so if you want to connect with people, use, use something human. Um, Confirming how the masculine and feminine words have been determined. Again, lots and lots of research by academics over decades and decades. So um, there's plenty of links out there. I'll um, make sure I get a couple in there for the follow-up email as well. So um, 
What's your opinion on channels? Do you think it's worth using female job boards or LGBT, et cetera? Um, look, I certainly think, well, Work on AD uh, is a job board aimed specifically at for women, for women to identify employers that are committed to equality. Um, and so I know for a fact it works. One of our clients the other day actually reported that they had um, the conversion from application to hire was eight times better than Indeed and five times better than LinkedIn. So I think there's a lot to be said for, for niche focused job boards, just as long as the job boards reach the audience that you want to reach. And um, I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of job boards out there that advertise niche positions will also allow aggregators to uh, repost their jobs. And um, what that means is that the talent pool that you're attracting is the talent pool that you could get anywhere. So when you're assessing a job board, I think it's really important to ask, okay, really love what you do and what you stand for, but how are you actually getting the people to the, to the site? And are they the right type of people? Um, just going through the questions. Um, we, uh, somebody said um, they use, they do display salary for the candidates and it's working for them. Um, that, that's a good thing. I think that people should display salary to candidates. It's, it's like buying or renting a house and then not putting how much it uh, costs on there. You, you don't know if it's right for you. Um, a couple of people said thank you, it's nice. Um, employer brand checklist, someone's asked for that. Yes, I'll make sure I send it uh, across after the session. A couple of people have asked for the checklist, that's great. Um, as an agency, as a recruitment agency, we can't always include the client details. Is there something we should mention without using the employer branding? Um, I would, uh, when I'm talking to the, the uh, company, I would ask them, the, the main question I would ask them is, what is it about your organization that makes you win talent? Why do people t say yes to jobs with you? And it might be that they promote people quicker than their competitors. Uh, it might be that they provide, they have really strong corporate social responsibility initiatives and their staff love getting involved with those. They might have hackathons, for instance. And by asking that question, um, you'll be able to get some information that you can include in the job ads without being too explicit around who the company is. Um, does your organization also do other webinars with other topics? Yes, we do. Um, we also don't just do webinars. Um, we also do in-person events. Uh, we have an HR event that we run quarterly called Executives Driving Gender Equality. Um, it is a free event, but um, we do get booked up very quickly for that. Um, in addition to that, we have an event for London Tech Week where we've got the head of diversity for um, Deloitte, uh, head of diversity for the Telegraph speaking. So that that should be a, that should be a great event. Um, we can certainly link to to that as well. And uh, if and also we will make sure we uh, notify the audience of future webinars. Um, do you have any guidance on applying the same principles to interview questions? Um, that's a really good question because I, I talk about candidate experience a lot. So I guess just super quickly, um, there's a lot of questions coming through, which is fantastic. Um, but I guess when we're interviewing candidates, the main thing is to make sure that we predetermine what the interview questions are. So everybody's getting asked the same questions and assess the same. So then, you know, a lot of companies say, oh, we, we hire on merit, but then the interview questions kind of sway quite a lot during the, during the actual interview. And the second thing as well is having a gender neutral, or sorry, gender balanced recruitment panel is, is very important. It's not just to get two people's perspectives on the person you're interviewing, but it's also the perception, you know, as a woman, if I go in for an interview, I spent 10 years in tech going for an interview and it's just a panel of guys interviewing me, 
that said to me, oh, this is potentially a boys club. So if you can have at least one woman on that interview panel, it's going to be a good candidate experience. Um, a few thank yous, that's nice. Um, a couple of questions um, that I've covered already. <laughs> and someone interested in the event. Okay, fantastic. Well, it looks like we've got to the end of all of those questions and um, the webinar should uh, <laughs> allow me to copy and paste all of those. So I will make sure that you get all of the information that you've asked for during this session. Um, and we finished 15 minutes early, so I'm giving you back a little bit of your day. Um, thank you so much for attending. Please feel free to add me on LinkedIn and my email address is also there if you would like to contact me directly. Thank you so much.